This budget hearing conducted by the Committee on Appropriations and Adjudication. Now reconvenes discussions of the FY 2018 Executive Budget Request. This morning we are meeting with the Department of Public Works to discuss their budget proposal. I want to preface this budget hearing with the uncertainty the government of Guam faces with regards to potential negative impacts of general fund revenue collections and economic activity as a result of numerous factors such as the H-2 visa denials, potential federal tax reforms, and cuts that may erode Guam's revenue base, including caps on the Section 30 revenues to be collected. With these issues at the top of our mind, the Guam Legislature has the daunting task of ensuring that we provide funding for the public services the people of Guam want and need. Just a brief overview. The executive budget request submitted by the Governor through the Bureau of Budget Management and Research provides for a 1.64 decrease for the Department of Public Works from FY17 authorized levels. Uh, I want to commend the uh, Department of Public Works for um, being frugal in these tough times. And uh, I would like to thank the DPW officials for being present here today. In as much as the Sergeant of Arms has already sworn you in, you may begin your presentation. Thank, thank you, Speaker. Good morning. Good morning, Senator Evan, Senator Nelson, Vice Speaker Terlahi. Thank you for the opportunity to present our fiscal year 2018 proposed budget. The Department of Public Works submitted its budget for FY 2018 to the legislature back in March 2017. Um, DPW's total budget request amounted to $17,457,772. This is a decrease, as you said, uh, Speaker, of a decrease of $1.643673 million when compared to fiscal year 2017's approved budget of 19,101,455. We have provided a schedule of budget comparative tables and attachments for your review and consideration um, to our requests. DPW's mission is responsible for providing government-wide services such as daily, bus, daily school bus transportation service for DOE regular school year for over 25,000 school children, maintenance of, uh, for 180 school buses, various road construction and earth moving equipment, heavy equipment, and other light, light vehicles, developing and maintaining Guam's roadways to include highway construction, flood mitigation, and road maintenance, managing the government of Guam's capital improvement projects, which entails permitting, regulating Guam's construction activities and maintaining Guam's building facilities and equipment. As mentioned, DPW's FY 2018 budget has a $1.6 million decrease when compared to FY 2017 approved. Um, the tables one, two, and three basically in, in illustrate what the decreases are from the two comparative. Um, we broke it out into uh, funding sources such as general fund and um, and highways, and we broke it out into um, um, categories such as personal operations. And the last table is a broken down into, by division. So just continue on page three. DPW's FY18 budget is at its bare bone level. In, in order to meet our, the budget ceiling provided to us, BBMR prioritize, private priority. Uh, prioritization of our current workload and man manpower needs need to be determined. At these levels, DPW will be challenged to fund any other activity other than, than meeting payroll. Our operational needs to meet our mandates. DPW has a total of 180 buses in its fleet, of which 62 units were purchased since 2010. The operational needs for bus operations are primarily to pay for the fuel costs and that's about 500,000. Supporting the maintenance of these buses and other heavy equipment requires our transportation maintenance division 
to have another 500,000 based on past annual average expenditures. This budget is only funding 174,000. I have to point out, uh, Speaker, that, that um, what we've done in the last fiscal year was we were allowed a, an appropriation of, that allowed us to, to spend the un, un, um, unexpended uh, amounts. And, um, um, but that was two years ago, two fiscal years ago. And, and since then, the next, this current calendar year, that we're, I mean, the fis uh, fiscal year that we're in, because the budget didn't, didn't allow us to, pr to carry that through, so we're now back to what we've um, submitted in our budget uh, uh, for 2017. Our building maintenance division will also be 100,000 less than its average annual budget. The building maintenance not only provides maintenance for Gov1 facilities, but also constructs and repairs our more than 900 bus shelters. The most significant impact to DPW's operation this budget will affect is the highway division. The division will have 1.3 out of the $1.6 million less than the prior years significantly challenging our department to provide much needed road repair and road improvements. We've, we've discussed this in, in, in um, my last two budget hearings for, for manpower, and what you're seeing here is that uh, based on our FY 2018 budget ceiling, hiring additional personnel are kept at a minimum. Bus drivers and highway personnel are, are in dire need, and so we're going to apply, we're, we're, we're um, increasing our bus drivers uh, population and, and our uh, highway maintenance population because we have heavy equipment. Um, anyways, uh, so below in the, the past five consecutive years, we've lost in FTEs 138 personnel and we've only hired uh, 55. Um, our target personnel for each division, um, um, again, we're showing at the administration 21 target, target and that's what we have. Um, the building maintenance target is 20. Currently, we have 14. Um, we're going to try to to hire three more this this year because we have, have people that are um, retiring. We're trying to to, to replace the retired uh, people, the people that are we're losing through attrition. And then for bus operations, we have um, our target is 156, and and um, that's basically 130 bus drivers with support, as you see in the asterisks. CIPs were. We're, we're on target transportation maintenance. Um, we need 21, and, and then the highways, um, which is our target is 86. Um, our current levels are uh, at 85, but we're losing a, a, a bunch more people because they're in uh, limited term employment. During FY 2015, uh, DPW lost its only chief engineer uh, in the highways division, and since has been without a chief engineer. And I want to thank you uh, for supporting us and allowing us to pull from the building uh, the development fund to hire our uh, chief engineer, and that's on the process as we speak. We're in the process, uh, as I, in addition, the department has occupied uh, um, FTEs which cannot fill the work that they are hired to fulfill. And I'm basically talking about our bus drivers. We have 13 bus drivers that are on light duty due to medical conditions, and one currently in Employee, employee currently on, in, in mili on military deployment. Um, so our, our man manpower needs are, again, minimum. That's what we're looking to just sustain so that we can uh, uh, be able to produce what we're, we're mandated to do. Subsequent events um, after our budget submittal, um, as mentioned, DPW submitted the FY 2018 budget back in March. Um, subsequent to our budget submission review has been was conducted by the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, Labor, Mine, Safety, and Health Administration, MSHA for short, uh, and that was conducted on our, our coral pit um, during the fiscal year 2017. We had been advised that there, that an audit would be forthcoming. Uh, it was actually uh, we were told it was back back in April. That hasn't happened as of this, as of this point in time, and we're in, uh, still anticipating that they'll come and. Uh, uh, conduct their audit. Anyways, but the, the review noted some discrepancies. Um, the major discrepancy to acquire heavy equipment to comply with MSHA standards, which is, which is in the amount of $1.6 million, is unfunded. 
And additionally, DPW is also in discussion with US EPA on its MS4 program, a program mandated to manage um, our island's stormwater. Once U US EPA identifies this program requirements, we may come back to the legislature to support our compliance needs. And then the last request that we have, Senator, is, uh, is that, um, Mr. Speaker, is that DPW is requesting for the legislature to assist us in two areas. First, DPW's coral pit section has been performing work related to our roads and highways. We, we take the cascal and we use that to, use the, to do the foundation work. Um, as a result, we'd like to amend the law to include uh, the Guam Highway Fund to fund these projects, which currently uh, we're only allowed to, to pay for the, this, this type of work from the general fund. Secondly, our global um, positioning satellite GPS devices are, are contingent upon cellular data services. So this is not for cellular phones. This is so that we can track our vehicles. Um, we need to amend the law to allow funding for our data cellular services as we have GPS devices on our buses as well as um, all of our other new equipment. Um, should you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Let's start from... Oh. I'm sorry, uh, can I introduce my, my, my managers, my team? On the far right, I've got um, Frank Titano, who's the bus superintendent. The Felix Beneventi is the deputy um, director for DPW. To my right is Arlene uh, uh, Pierce, who's our controller. And then Paul, to her right is Paul Cepeda, the uh, transportation maintenance uh, supervisor, uh, superintendent. And then Dominic Munya, who's uh, in charge of the manager for uh, building maintenance. Just so everybody understands it, the balcony is full and so is it in here. You're coming today <clears throat> with a budget that's 1.64 that was the budget that the executive sent down. This is, just so they understand, this is not the budget that we have passed. This is the budget that you're presenting today on behalf of the administration. That's correct. Okay. I just wanted them to understand that, that we didn't cut the 1.6, so I don't want anybody throwing anything from up there. <laughs> um, and let's just start from the last, uh, your last, well, your request on the cellular so we, we were. Um, is it funded? Do you need funding, or is there is there a need for uh, an amendment to a law somewhere that the lit the later? We don't need funding. We have um, a, that's part of. Okay, it, it was in our original operational needs. We we put that in our our buses so we can track them and and heavy equipment um, because it's GPS. Um, it's it's classified as cellular service, and the law, uh, this allows cellular service for. That's, that was an audit finding, Speaker, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I thought we were, uh, Tony Anda, when he was, when he was here, that w he put that in the last budget. He repealed the restriction. No, you want to speak to that? Audit finding. Our recent audit findings from uh, the Guam Highway Fund cited um, uh, twenty some thousand dollars, thinking it was possibly through cellular service, but it was related to the GPS. And in the Budget Act, um, it prohibits um, cellular service with the exception of federal grants. So we're on iConnect Communications Radio. Okay. If you can look, Arlene, at the uh, Public Law 33.181, which is the budget that was the last budget for this fiscal year, that particular provision, the restriction was lifted government-wide. I believe it was government-wide. Yes. yes. No, no, the restriction was lift, lifted, so this oh, authorization okay. may not be necessary. Okay. That's what the speaker is alluding to. Okay, that was a citation given to us, probably the crossover of the fiscal years between Perhaps, the time yeah. the auditors had cited it. And so we just wanted to alert you that we do have 
this related to tracking devices? Lisa, if I can ask you, like, like the speaker was, was saying a little earlier, alluding to a little earlier, if, we, if I can ask you to revisit the budget for this fiscal year, which is probably about 33181, which removes carte blanche, that restriction okay. on cellular services for the government of Guatemala. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. I, I thought that we had addressed that, and I thought for sure we'd have huge budgets for cell phones. But, well, um, and the coral fit. Can you elaborate on that some more? I'm going to let Arlene. Uh, my understanding is that with the um, current budget, that we're we're only allowed to use general op, the general um, general uh, the general fund but the money to manage our coral coral pit uh, work. We're doing other work um, for highway highway operations. Like uh, as I mentioned, we do uh, the subsurface work. We prep that with the Style, so we need coral from that, and we so we need the law to be flexible so that it allows us to to pull from the general the highway fund. Okay, we we can I'll look into that. Okay. The um, this morning the governor mentioned we're getting five new buses with cameras. Uh, is is that in addition to the five that you said that we've got this year? Um, yes, we we this this will be for fiscal year 2018. There's a capital improvement uh, outlay for 450,000. Um, that's in table one. Uh, actually, it's table all the table table one, two, and three. And the the requirement is that we um, we had I think it was uh, was it Paul how much three million or four million in bus new new units that we purchased from DOI. Four million in total. So they've come and they've done an audit on us, and they're saying that um, part of the requirements are that we don't have a bus a, a, a bus replacement fleet replacement uh, plan. So our our fleet replacement replacement plan is that we will um, take uh, try to do 10 percent um, every year. Uh, so and the goal is to have 150 buses. That's that's my target goal is 150 bus units. So um, 20 will be on a, uh, as part of the plan. 20 would be should a bus break down, then we'd have um, substitute, and for the 130, that would, that should su should uh, um, supply our uh, bus service. How many bus drivers do you need to adequately staff this this operation? I I need I need 130 actual bus drivers, sir, and and I need. Um, um, the support staff for that, so that that comes up to about a hundred and. Um, you have 151 in the budget. Yes, but I have a lot of I have uh, 13 people that are on light duty, um, that are bus drivers currently bus drivers. So I have 13 people that are in light duty. And I have 124 uh, active bus drivers. Eight supervisors and five support administrative staff. So you have a, a sufficient workforce for your bus service. Yes. Okay. This current or, or this last this current fiscal year. Have you have you been receiving all of your allotments in cash? Yes, we have, with the exception of our continuing accounts. And we had authorized that previously, right? And you're saying we did not authorize it in this last one? No. It, it was given two years ago, and we still had lapses from that continuing account. But because it was not renewed, um, um, every budget cycle um, controls the budget for each year. So it was not uh, included. So. We weren't allowed to use whatever lapse that we had from there. So, so how much are you are st you still holding in your continuing appropriation? In the continuing appropriation accounts, we're we're looking at about close to four hundred thousand, three hundred and seventy thousand, and it's for bus 
is for maintenance of buses. 370,000? About 370,000, which are continuing accounts from the prior year that was unused. That's quite a bit of money. I, I, I thought we needed lots of, did we over appropriate for bus maintenance? That we have 370 left over, or how, how is that possible? Sir, sir we, we use uh, about $500,000 on an annual basis to, to repair our buses. Um, this, uh, this fiscal year, we were short because we, we, we pulled the money from them because you give it to us, give, give us money in a, in, a, in, a, in a lump sum. So we alloc reallocated our budget so we can meet our operational needs in other, the other divisions because we had a continuing account. But we, we misunderstood our, our, we miscalculated and um, because this wasn't, the unused portion, the, four, the, the 380 was, was what we were uh, relying on um, did not come into to fruition. So now um, transportation maintenance is, We're waiting for them to uh, uh, um, resupply uh, with parts and, and, and materials so they can continue on with their. Budget. How much in your 17 budget have you have you had to give up and transfers to other departments? No, we, we haven't uh, given up any money to other transfers. In 16, you did right. There was budget well, transfers out of Public Works yeah. to other departments. I saw that in. So in, years. in in 16, we we gave up um, um, roughly nine hundred nine hundred thousand dollars, sir, um, and that was because we we put it in requisitions, and the requisitions for whatever reason did not get uh, processed, so we lost that. Uh, but transfers were the governor transfers some public works to another department. How much was transferred out of public works? None, not this, not this time around, and or the last year. Last year we, we transferred. This year we did not. And transferred to where? Um, back to the general fund. No, no. They, there was a. Uh, um, uh, they asked me to transfer, uh, and I don't know. No, I, no, I remember because I, I was shocked that, right. that you were giving up and uh, giving yeah, up any so, money. So this year we had not because they asked to pull the money from from the building development, the building design fund, and we told them that that's uh, uh, we couldn't do that because the law doesn't allow us to do that. But there was a transfer. Not this year, sir. Okay. Well, I confirm that and send you a, a note. Um, I was looking at your travel. You have three travel, and you have the explanations are attached, but three of them are for a chief engineer that you don't even have yet. Am I reading that correctly? Is that under the CIP, or what fiscal year, sir? Fiscal year 18? This one? There's three, three separate requests at 5,000 oh, 5, each for a chief engineer that I thought we didn't even have yet.
I'm sorry, th this is the building design fund? I understand. Okay. I'm, ju I'm still trying to figure out how, how you have travel set aside for a person that doesn't even, hasn't even been hired yet. The assumption here is that we will have the chief engineer on board. This this is the building design fund. It's outside of the Guam Highway Fund and general fund. And uh, how much do you collect in the building design fund annually? Um, annually, roughly about um, we have uh, in the building design fund we have. Permit as of um, March 31. For permits, about um, I'm sorry, for plan checking, about 599,000. That's how much we're tracking. For the permits, about 219,000 as of March 31. And who has control of, uh, of that 800,000? I'm sorry, who has? Who 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 can who controls the expenditure of that eight hundred thousand? Our our department does. Cleared by who? We go through BBMR. That's in your report to us. We don't appropriate that those those funds. The enactment of this um, building design fund. Is, it's, it's a non-appropriated, but we still provide budget information to your office as well as the town. There's supplemental information provided for courtesy. We have, um, out, out of the building de design fund speaker, we have four uh, inspectors. Uh, and of the four inspectors, one is the administrator. We have um, two um, customer service reps. These are the people that actually man the permit center. Um, of the building de design fund, uh, the money that, that is collected, 25% goes to um, um, Department of Public Works for the hiring of uh, the chief engineer and, and engineers. 25% um, goes to uh, um, the museum and 50% goes to the Guam Preservation Trust. Guam, Guam Preservation Trust. That's how that money is allocated. Okay. No, I remember when I gave that money back to you guys. But yes. Thank you. But I'm. That's why I thought that we had authorization, authority over that fund, and I'm trying to figure out why. Okay. Um, while we're talking about travel, you, you have travel this the six thousand out of general fund. What's that for? Yes, that travel is for me to attend the Guam, the GFOA is the Government Finance Officers Association to get uh, CPUs continuing professional education. So there's only one travel for that for the general fund under admin. And that's how much? Um, this is one travel estimated at 6000 For how many it's days? It's estimated. When do you expect to pick up your chief engineer? We've, we've already um, 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 done the, the, the greasing of the skids, if you will. Talk to the Department of Administration. The law that you just recently passed required that we work with the Department of Administration. Um, that also requires that the chief engineer have a minimum of 10, 10 years. Um, when we did that process last year and it got held up at BBMR because we couldn't hire above that step, I don't know what the, no the no level was, but um, now that we can, um, we, we, we have the, the person that, that um, has over 20 years of experience, he still wants to work. Um, um, so we're now just going through, crossing the T's, dotting our I's with the Department of Administration, and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll proceed with hiring. I'm, 
I'm hopeful that we'll hire him within the next two months. Is that person in-house or outside? He's outside. Um, he, he was here last budget hearing last year. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did have several items I wanted to discuss with you, but you touched them during the course of your presentation. So, Mr. Longer, I, I certainly appreciate that because one of them was the the busing, and just with the general understanding that you have presently 180 buses in your fleet, are they all operational? No. Okay. How many are we, presently? We have 100 today. We have 146. Yes. 47 that are operational. 147? That's correct. So why would you highlight that you have 180 buses in your fleet? Because we have 180 bus units in our fleet. I mean, are the other, others being uh, utilized for parts? Or no, 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 in the no, process no, no, of no, no, we don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. so, so what we'll do is, um, um, that's what I'm saying. We, we, and we have, although we have, my point, I'm sorry if I, if I didn't um, explain that clearly, we, we, since 2010, we've been we've been actively trying to to replace the fleet because it's an aged, old fleet. Um, we've replaced, managed to get 62 new units, 62 new units, and, and um, um, we need to replace the entire fleet. We've got buses that are as old as 1990, 1990, and, and so uh, you know again, um, I don't want to get into the bus drivers or the transportation maintenance uh, mechanics, but. You do have good, good, good old equipment that you, and if they're reliable and they're still usable, you still don't want to give them up. But, but, but when they do break down, um, uh, it becomes costly because they, they, their parts are no longer um, on the shelf. And it, uh, any, anyway, so the, we need to come up with a, a bus replacement uh, uh, plan, which I, I alluded to earlier. Um, so, of the the 180 um, buses. Again, for me, the, my target is 150. We need to get 150. Uh, and, and as, as uh, our bus service requirements change, either they go up or they go down, that's what we need to adjust to. Okay, I, I bring that up, and you also mentioned that you have sufficient bus drivers to be able to ensure that. I'm, I'm still short, and, and I'm I'm, let me qualify that. We, we have 20... I know you mentioned you have 13 that are reassigned by virtue of... Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about today. Um, I'm, I'm short summertime, but we're, we've passed the GG1s down to BBMR. We're sure that they're going to get through. And if they, they pass through, um, we're okay with the 2018. We're going to keep them on board, and, and that'll, that'll help us. Um, my target, again, is 130 bus drivers, active bus drivers, with the support staff. Uh, and once I get that, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable in saying that, that we, we will provide adequate uh, bus service. Okay, let me transition. Good bus service, not adequate. Good bus service. We got good people. Thank you. Uh, and, and we recognize that you're getting not only additional buses, and you, you highlighted that you received since 2010 62 additional buses. So certainly the effort is there on the part of the department to be able to replenish your fleet. And I certainly appreciate that because it always comes down to safety. Thank safety you. for either the bus drivers, safety for the students who are being transported, and safety for the community because every now and then you allow, you allow an opportunity for the buses to be utilized for specific functions. So I certainly appreciate that. The other um, aspect I wanted to inquire about was the planners. How are you with your planners in place? Um, currently we have um, in the CIP section, we have one uh, uh, chief planner I think that's all we have. <laughs> so we don't have any other planners, sir. So they're not a, a significant requirement at this point in time. <laughs> I mean, you, if you had them, you would use them. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we recognize that. Absolutely. And then looking at, uh, I know a couple years back, the department, the government invested in about $2 million worth of equipment, heavy equipment for road repair. Now, you're utilizing some of that. What I'm hearing from you is that part of your challenge is that you have a bare bones budget. Yes. Other than meeting payroll, and this is from your statement on page three, DPW will be challenged to fund any other activity other than meeting payroll. Yes. And then you go on and you highlight that you need approximately half a million dollars for fuel, 
to be able to uh, address the bus transportation requirements. That's covered in 2018, yes. yes. And then you also need an additional half a million dollars for other transportation requirements. So you for transportation maintenance to fulfill its mandate, yes. But I only have 170. So you have 174 just for the transportation maintenance component and that you need half a million dollars for fuel. So let me ask you, based on the $1.64 million reduction in your budget on the request that has been forwarded to the speaker and to this legislative body, and recognizing that you have a bare bones budget, aside from being creative and maybe uh, asking the governor for support through compact impact, using the building and design fund to be able to fund some of your requirements, how can you assure the people of Guam that $17.4 million is going to provide the community a very good investment in personnel? And I, I give kudos to all of your employees over the past year and also the bus drivers because they've done a fine job. But looking at that and $17.4 million inclusive of employees and ensuring that they have the tools the equipment and the funding necessary to ca carry out their mandate, how can you tell me that $17.4 million will ensure the department operates? Senator, the $17.4 million, with that money, we cannot. I, I just said it's bare bones. Then let we, me ask we, you. We, we, would, we would be able to, uh, and, and, and I asked the question as well, and, and uh, I asked the question, um, uh, because at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, I'm very, very pleased with our bus service. I'm actually even just as pleased with my, with, and, and, and the maintenance of our, of our buses. I'm, I'm very pleased with our, with, our, with our highway maintenance, which is the, the organization or the division that's severely impacted. Um, and so, so uh, uh, there are things that we were looking at outside of the budget, um, such as, you know, the, the $50 million bond that, that uh, Speaker has entertained in the past, um, which will give us the, the, the wherewithal to, to move forward with that. But short of that, that's outside of the realm of the budget. Um, I've, been, I've been assured by, by um, um, uh, the fiscal team that, that they will take care of us. They will, they, they will, they will make sure that the, the things that we need to do such as repair roads, such as buy uh, equipment. Um, so, like I mentioned with um, with um, Paul's situation, where where we were relying on a continuing account, and they have now found a way for us to 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 modify our our, our budget this current year so that we can purchase more uh, uh, parts that we do need. And then, and for for Dominic, who's um, uh, short by a hundred thousand, that we're also trying to get some more additional supplies, uh, plywood, so that we can do more bus shelters. And repair the, of the bus shelters. Um, we're. Uh, I, I don't have the answer to that. I, you're asking for something that's that's clear. I would, if you give me one point six. Actually, you you answered it piecemeal. I mean, you said that you received the assurance of the front office that they will provide the department with the resources necessary to operate into the next FY. I'm just paraphrasing your statement. Yes, sir. So based on that assurance, all of these employees who are in, in the gallery and up, at, up top on the second floor, then they can be assured and the people of Guam can be assured that we have a department that has 200 some employees over the course of the next fiscal year. Right now they're being reduced by $1.6 million into comparing fiscal year 17 with fiscal year 18 budget, but with the resourcefulness of yourself, identifying other special funds and working with the front office that there's an assurance that these employees will have the tools, the resources necessary to continue operation status quo, and that the people of Guam can receive that assurance that $17.4 million is, is a good investment in the Department of Public Works. I say when you're talking about personnel, I, there's no question there. That's an excellent investment. Whether our personnel within DPW in this case would have the tools, the resources, the equipment, to, and the and some funding to be able to carry out their mandate to the greatest extent possible, that's where the people want to be that assurance. And so, so Senator, if you're talking about assurances, do you want to give me 1.6? I would accept it. Uh, 
but 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 you, you but I will live within what I have, and we will do what we can. And I can I can this is my assurance that that we have good people, and they will they find ways to to make things happen. Um, if you don't give me the money, or if we don't have the money, uh, uh, like you mentioned, we for the heavy equipment for the highway transportation portion. There's other things that we could look at. We could work with land management and work with the with the with the uh, Schwal Land Trust and open roads for them. Again, it's just Cascal, but but at the, at the end of the day, and in the meantime, um, um, my my program, our, the DPW's program for the highways, is that. That, that again, we've been so far behind eight ball that our roads are not in good condition. Every time I get on the radio, people are calling up and they're so, they're vibrant, they're upset, they're frustrated because our road systems, and we have not done a good job of, of, of maintaining our roads. So my, my program is to get us back to where we need to get to. I'm talking to, to uh, um, the Federal Highway uh, uh, Administrator who's coming in tonight and, and I'm asking that we we reprogram money so that we can do some of the, the, the roads on the router roads um, so that we can fix the roads that we have. Um, and, and how I get, get along with that, we'll see. Um, but, but I have every, every intention of, of fulfilling our mandate. I have every intention of pr improving the department's um, uh, ability to, to, to meet its mandates and, and, and to be responsible to, 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 to our community. No, and I appreciate that. And like I said, the, the assurance that you've already conversed with the front office because right now you're requesting from this body $17.4 million. You're not requesting a status quo budget of 19.1, which you received in fiscal year 17. So with a reduction of 1.6, it's going to require your innovativeness, uh, your resourcefulness, you and your entire team, as well as all of the employees within DPW so that in fact our people can receive that assurance that they're going to continue to, to get the best service that they possibly can. And my statements are in no way questioning the hard work ethic of oh, your employees. Understand. It's looking at this and saying they're coming to us with a $1.6 million reduction in their budget. You really admit that it's a bare bone budget. So how can we receive that assurance aside from the $50 million bond for road repairs that the speaker is presently considering and the legislative body, aside from that, how can we receive that assurance that the employees would have the equipment and the resources to carry out their responsibilities, and then also more, because we always ask to do more with less, and that's, that's a challenge, and, and we already know the numbers. It's, the media has been very open in sharing that information based on what the speaker and the chairman has provided over discussions in, over the last few months. So recognizing that, I thank you for that assurance that at least you have initiated that conversation with the front office and you receive a certain sense of assurance that your department will continue to operate with additional resources from other areas aside from what will be provided in the 17 point million dollar request. So I appreciate that, Mr. Leon Guerrero. And thank you and all of your team members and all of the department uh, staff and personnel for your ongoing efforts every single year. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Leon Guerrero and, and all of you who are present for being here today. And um, your testimony is um, Very surprising, I guess. I mean, I, I was going to ask you about the one, one million dollars, the contractual services for the Guam Highway. Was the request is one million dollars less than last year? Is that 1. correct? One point three. Yeah. Could you just um, clarify what does that represent? What, what is the change? Well, it, again, we're going to in. We've been today, this fiscal year, we're increasing our, our, our FTEs because of we have heavy equipment and, and, and we're utilizing the heavy equipment. The, the initial uh, purchases of the heavy equipment was for the uh, flood mitigation and to, to go to some other purposes. We obviously adapted that and we're, we're, we're meeting that mandate, but we're also um, doing road repairs. The Hamburger Highway, as for an example. Chechi, and then the next road project that we have um, would be um, up in Zero Valley. So, uh, uh, but then 
after that, I don't have any funds. Uh, this is all the funds that you've appropriated to the Department of Public Works several years back. I'm just now getting them so that we're, we're coming and, and, and holding true to that. Um, uh, the 1.3, what we, 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 what we use that normally for would be we, we have um, um, for areas that we, we need um, heavy equipment that we don't have, that's what we use to, to purchase heavy equipment or hire heavy equipment. Um, on, an, on an annual basis or on a quarterly basis, we, we have um, um, roughly, I think, I don't, I don't, the numbers don't remember, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking either 100 to $200,000 on a quarterly basis of, of um, cold mix, which we, we normally store at the, the uh, coral pit. And then the mayors from, from, from all over the island, they come and pick that up and they, they use that to, uh, to maintain the potholes or fix the potholes on the secondary and tertiary roads. Um, we also have a, 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 a cadre of, um, of, of cold mix that we use for the routed roads. Um, um, so um, that 1.3 uh, and, and, and what we did last year, as I mentioned, last year we lost $900,000 because our requisitions didn't get pro were not processed. We just lost that money. And so we were stuck. We were left holding the bag without a lot of uh, materials and, and, and uh, um, uh, uh, materials that we needed and resources that we needed. Um, this year, I went to the governor and I said, I said, okay, I'm not going to let this happen again. I'm not going to let it ca get caught up in something that I have no control over. So I went to the governor and I said, Governor, I'm pulling $500,000 from this 1.3, 1. 1. this, this, this uh, amount of money that we set aside, it's actually 1.8, for, for, um, for, for highways. And, and what project do you want to, to see? And I was thinking maybe he'd do two or three projects, but he said hamburger was the biggest, so that's where that money went. So hamburger is about four hundred thousand uh, dollars, close to four and a half, to, uh, and that's what we're using that money to pay uh, hamburger. Or, I'm sorry, I've been corrected so many times, and I still haven't learned from my correction. The Adrian Sanchez letter. Okay, so the one million dollars less in contractual, though, is because less reliance on contracting out for heavy equipment or or contracting out for road repair, and more the increase. FTEs by about 20, 20 employees in the highway division? Yes. Okay. Um, but you, all right. And so for 2018, what can we see from the highway? What can we expect in, in regards to roadways from the highway division with 85 employees? So, so if, 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 um, uh, if, we have a project, and uh, I'm just going to give you hypotheticals because I don't, do, do I don't have, have a, anything concrete. Do you have a plan for 2018? Which projects are priority, I guess, for this highway division? Mm -hmm. This is the in-house road repair or road construction. Is that correct? So you have, you have uh, potholes that, that, that they, they, they occur, and, and they need repair. Um, but my plan is, is that um, um, well, my plan has now been revised, and it's gotten a lot bigger because of bigger visions from, from people like yourselves. So if we have the $50 million bond come into play, I, the, the highway maintenance per personnel, even with the increased number of FTEs, they would be busy for the next two or three years. Um, this, and, and the plan is, uh, is, a, is a three um, uh, roads that, that, that uh, the mayors have come up with and plus the, the, the roads that we figured out that, that are that are in great need that the mayors haven't identified um, that we've done through the scientific process. All right, what about without the bond? Then without the bond, like I, I mentioned earlier, I said we will figure out something. We may go to land management. Uh, they have a lot. They, I get a lot of requests from people that say I've got, uh, I've got property and can you, can you open a road for me? We're doing the best we can. We put them on the list. We do that. Again, but we tell everybody that uh, when we open the roads for you, um, um, it's not asphalt because we don't have asphalt. So, so when it rains heavily and you know people are, just understand that this is um, not a uh, this is not a, an ideal situation. What what I've done in, 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 in several discussions that I've had with people that live in Tremont Land Trust property is can you get together with other people and, and obviously they're not they're not highly resourced. So, but but if you know we're talking about uh, I don't know maybe a thousand.
$50,000, $60,000 that they can chip in, and they can, we'll do the subsurface work. We'll manage the, we'll manage the, 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 the flood mitigation as best we can. But if you put the asphalt on it, then we would never have to be back at that roadway for another 15 years. Are so you saying then that, that the projects on that priority list that was submitted from the mayors uh, that we were working on in regards to the bond, that none of those projects could be repaired or could be taken on by DPW without the bond at this point during FY18? We, we will take on uh, uh, projects. Okay. Again, again, if, if, if I had 1.6, if, if I had the same uh, 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 budget that I had this year, uh, we will do that. Um, whatever, whatever is the higher priority, I'm happy to, 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 to make it happen. Well, yes, that's why I'm asking because I am concerned about the decrease and I am concerned about what we might be losing, what we will be losing. And But you've assured us that, that busing, busing and bus maintenance will be taken care of. No, I've assured you that busing will be taken care of. Bus maintenance, I'm short uh, by two point three hundred thousand. No, because you got one hundred and seventy-four. So I have the hundred seventy-four left. Three hundred thousand, three hundred twenty-five. Bus maintenance is short, but but you're assuring us that busing will be provided throughout FY twenty eighteen. We'll make it happen by speaker. Okay, and um, this is for the schools, right? Yes. Busing? Okay, and the and then the building maintenance. Is, um, so, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to put a cloud because that's, that's kind of what we're, we're, I'm saying, you want to eliminate the cloud because I don't have those specific answers. Um, give me the 1.6. But, but if, you, if you, and this is a, a lot of trust. I'm trusting the administration, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trusting, because I'm part of the administration, I'm trusting uh, the, uh, the, fi the, the fiscal team that they're, they're, they'll hold true and they'll say th these are things that we need and they'll give it to us. Uh, and, and, and the way, the reason why I can say that and say that uh, um, uh, without a doubt is that we, we had these big projects. We've had FESPAC. We've had other projects where we had no money, no budget. They said do this and we, and we did it. We did it. We did it with, with the help of the legislature. We did it with the help of, uh, of, of the administration. We, we made things happen. And, 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 and to be candid with you, forgive me for, for for, for standing on the soapbox, but I think I think the Department of Public Safety, I, our bus, our bus operations did a superb job in in Pestback. I think we let the island shine, and and people were happy with what, what we provided. And granted, th th there was th you know, the money that we, that we threw in was a lot of money, but but at the end of the day, we didn't have that budget. Somehow it came to us, and we were able to to produce. Th that's the assurance I can give you. I can't well, give you points. I can't say we're going to get this. This is the road we're going to do. That I, I don't have that. No, you're right, and I, I very much appreciate it, and I I I I agree with you. I think uh, you have done a lot with what you have been given, and so um, yeah, make the whole island proud and happy. I know we're, everyone's still concerned about the roads, and even the mayors, they ask us all the time, what about the roads? Why can't we get DPW to prioritize roads? So that's why I want to know just what, are, what can we expect? So everyone knows right away in the beginning what we, can, what we are expecting to accomplish FY18. And if we can get more specifics, then we can, um, you know, we just have to either live with it or, or deal with it in another way, right? My, and, uh, my uh, speaker, I, 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 I fully agree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go backwards. I, I don't want to get back to the place where we're behind the eight ball. We, mm -hmm. we need to maintain the roads. And, and like I said, um, federal highways, I'm meeting with them. My relationship with them yes. has improved significantly. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing them, uh, albeit they take a long, 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 yes. long time to deliberate, mm -hmm. a long, mm -hmm. long, long time to, to execute. But, but my, my point is I don't want us to go backwards. And, 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 and we've come, come so far. We've got, we've got a lot of good um, initiatives that we've, we've started, and I don't want to stop that. Okay. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that, and I appreciate all your efforts. I, yeah, I am just, I'm, I'm with you. I'm concerned that this, the, the cut in funding is going to impact. I mean, that I'm glad to see you've got full personnel. So I guess the question is, with all personnel in place, what can we expect, right? What can we not expect? I guess if we could just, um, maybe not today, but if the public can be just made clear that 
we're not expecting this, these things anymore from DPW because we're not funding those. I want to be clear about that too. For, for example, when it comes to building permits, you're, you're staffed. No. Able to handle building permits? I'm, not, I, I'm short. I, I need, even I, with this budget request, you're not requesting to, build, to take Building care permits of those? gets funded out of a, a building development fund, uh -huh. not, not out of here. And so you're saying the, fifth, the percentage that you're getting is not enough to take care of what you need to process you know, building permits? I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm having trouble with um, uh, um, filling. filling what, what is that? The, is, that's not the engineer? No, no. This is building inspectors. Okay. All right. I'm concerned about that. And, and, the, and then DPW's role when it comes to um, getting these schools ready for next year and, of course, in the procurement, all of our uh, CIP procurement goes through uh, DPW, and I just want to make sure you're okay in that department. Not, not for education. Education takes care of themselves. The repairs. Um, correct. And, and the chief engineer is, as I mentioned in prior public hearings, is critical for me to, to build that team so that we can actually do, uh, avoid, hopefully, some of the, the challenges that we've had, the, the, the the complaints, the OPA, what are they? Um, the right. improvement. And finally, do you have um, the capability to do in-house construction management? No, not now. But that's that is part of the plan for the CIP. That, that's the team that that, that um, our our um, our, uh, our chief engineer and and also with um, um, Dominic. Um, for facilities maintenance. Uh, our long-term goal is we don't want to increase the number of uh, building maintenance personnel. We, we need a core group of people, plumbers, carpenters, um, uh, electricians, uh, air conditioning people that, that can do uh, short-term emergency quick fixes throughout all our facilities. But, but the right answer, the long-term answer is to get these guys um, into construction management, uh, contract management, so that we can outsource it out and then Mm -hmm. uh, have have that um, have somebody take care of, of of our facilities. I guess that's why I'm confused because under building maintenance in FY17 you had 17, in FY18 you're only requesting 14, but your target is 20. Yes. And yeah, that's another thing that I guess everybody hears, right? Is the uh, the maintenance of the building, public building. There are just so many. I can't even imagine how how you do it with 17 employees. It's it's. Uh, startling noon today and uh, I'm concerned about that I mean yeah. I just want if it's a need I think yeah you need to put your foot down if that's but anyways I thank you for the answers I thank you very much mr. director um, you mentioned that uh, you have vacancies in your building permits I have one uh, building building inspectors yes how many vacancies do you have there we we um, re really don't have vacancies. We need uh, um, we have currently we have four. We need we need six more. That's what we need. We need a total of uh, ten ten people or twelve, but ten is fine. I mean that's I'm happy with that. Is that in this budget? A request no. for ten? No no no. Because it because the the funding would be paid through the building development fund. And why haven't you picked up ten? Um, we have a couple of issues. One, we were working through with um, 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 Department of Administration. Um, they, we, we just have issues with recruitment and recruitment. It's not the funding at this point in time. It's just recruitment. Okay, so I want to make it very clear. Yes. It's not funding. Yes. Because I get calls almost daily about the fact that to get their license renewed, or to get an inspection done, it's a four-week. That's that's fast because because it's a little longer than that. Uh, yeah, I understand it's even longer than that, but that's unconscionable. It is, and so what we need to do is we need to, to beef up the, the permit section with more inspectors, and 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 it's not just that it, um, the CIP portion, the chief engineer and his team, they need to review plans as they come in um, and, and so that that, that gets um, that process has got to be improved as well since since it's already funded it's already since you already have the funds for it have you explained to the fiscal team that not clearing people's licenses or not giving people the green light to start their operation affects tax collections I mean it, it, it's 
Certainly. People are unable to rent. They're unable to start their businesses. I get calls because they can't. The restaurant started three months later than they, than they expected. Mr. Speaker, that, that's not on the fiscal team. That's on me. And that will change. That will be improved by this time next year when I see you, if I'm here. Um, you'll, you'll see that uh, uh, that that situation will have greatly improved. Uh, it, 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 it's a whole slew of things from position descriptions, it, the things that that involve recruitment with the department administration. So we'll, uh, and um, but but just so it's clear, it's not a funding issue from here. No, because no, I and, keep and telling them it's. Yes, and we're appreciative of the fact that you're giving us 25 percent of the of the bidding of the permits. So we've got to do something because, yes. really, seriously, it's it is negatively impacting the economy. I think. I agree. Good morning, Mr. Young Brown. Uh, thank you, DPW staff, for all the hard work you've done and uh, continuing to supply buses and bus rides for our children and the maintenance of our road. Thank you for your outstanding work. Uh, I do have several questions. You know, uh, throughout this course, we've been inquiring your um, decrease in your budget request. And I guess it's a concern to all of us because even with your decrease in budget request, you're still saying, I don't have this, I don't have that, I'm not able to function here but you've put a decrease in your budget request. And usually when you have a budget request, and I know you're not new at this, and please forgive me if I'm overstepping, but you would, you would have the appropriate budget you would need to supply your personnel with the tools and whatever other you know, uh, things that they would need to, to operate. But you have a decrease in budget, and you're saying, I don't have this, I don't have, and I don't have that, I can't guarantee this. Can you explain the logic behind that? Sure. Yes. I, in, in, in the position I hold as a director for the Department of Public Works, um, uh, I am not in, in the policy. Uh, every question I get asked, every, um, uh, I mean, if, if we had $50 million, what would $50 million do for our, for our highway? My, my answer to that is, well, 50 million out of 800 for the secondary and tertiary roads is, is a step in the right direction, but it's not the answer. I mean, it, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to do this and, and we'll, we'll need to, to, to move forward. We've got to do with what we have. So, so to answer your question, um, um, how, do we, how, do I, how, how do I give you assurances? The only assurances I can give you is that, that, that I that I'm here to make things happen, and, and, and hopefully my, the track record of the department has, has, has proven that. Um, uh, I have to trust in, in and, and I do. I, 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 I honestly, wholeheartedly, I trust the legislative process. I trust the, the administration, uh, 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 fiscal team's process, and, and if there's something that, that, that we need to get us, I mean, the last thing I'm sure they don't want, the last thing you don't want, is for us to be hiring people so they can come to the office, punch their, their, their timesheet, and just twiddle their thumbs. Fortunately, we don't have people like that. We have people that are hardworking, and, they, and, 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 and the, the, the fruits of the last, I, think for, I can only speak for two years, for the last two years, I'm, I'm very proud of. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned the last two years, because just in 2016, you had an IG inspection on your buses. And one of the things you said was, <clears throat> DPW's annual budget for the legislature have been, a, have been on a bare bones budget for many years. So this is my concern because now you're asking for a decrease in budget. Some of the, they, they cited that you're missing several opportunities to, to make its school bus transportation program more efficient. What have you done in the past two years to fix that? Or the past year to fix that since 2016? We've gotten new buses. We've gotten okay. uh, GPS systems. That okay. is, um, and what about fleet, the fleet management system? Okay. And then what about your service repair orders? I'm Have sorry? you fixed that? Your service repair orders? Have you improved that system? Oh, there? absolutely. We're now we're now uh, automated. Um, 
Excellent. We still have a little bit of quick kinks, but we're, we're fully automated, and, and, and you can ask Paul the, the, the program that we worked through. So what happened to the $900,000 in, re in lost requisition that you had to give back? What was the primary problem for that, and how did you fix it? I didn't fix it. We lost it. No, how would you fix it this year? Right, you lost 900000 last year, so how did you fix it this so, year? So last year we lost $900,000 in requisitions. This is how did cold that mix, um, uh, all sorts of, uh, some of his uh, parts. Mm, uh, uh, um, so this year, um, m and the majority of that was from, from the, uh, the highway fund. So I said, like I said, I said earlier, I, I said, okay, we're not going to be in a position where if a requisition is not processed, we lose it. And so we, we worked around and we said, okay, as highway maintenance, let's build, let's build some roads, let's, let's go and initiate So you project. improved the requisition process within your agency? I did not improve the requisition. It's, I have no control over the requisition process. Okay. So I had, whatever I had control over, that's the route I took to use the money that you've given me so that I can look at you and say, this is, this is, this is our contribution. The, the projects that you had for that 900000 are you implementing it this in for this fiscal year? Sorry? The projects that you lost for that 900000 that you the, lost in requisition, are you going to utilize it for this year? But so, for this up, so upcoming this, budget? So this fiscal year, I'm hearing that we're, because we're having trouble uh, uh, recruiting, um, we're having some lapses. So we're allowed now to, uh, BBMR has allowed us to, to uh, uh, modify our budget to move it around so we can pick up um, some supplies for uh, um, building maintenance, transportation maintenance, and, and um, Yes. I'm asking if the projects are rolled over. Are you anticipating for those projects that you lost from the 900,000 rolled over into FY18? The, they weren't projects. Senator, or are the requisitions, are yes, they being rolled the, over to FY18? Um, no. So, so but you can't because we we're 1.6 million short. <clears throat> okay. I have a question from a constituent. They're, they have a concern about the two bridges down south. What is the timeline for that? Um, we've had numerous problems. Um, uh, initial problem in the delay was we, uh, the contractor was working with GPA and we needed to isolate. So that, that was maybe a two, three month delay. And then, then from when we actually had um, uh, to put in the, the pilings. What is the timeline? When will it be done? The, the initial timeline was that we were supposed to get, it was supposed to have been done by, um, I think it was December this year, um, but we're looking at, we're looking at March probably. March of 2018? 2018. Okay. Um, one more question. You know, there, you, we provide buses for the private schools. Uh, is yes. there a way that there's a cost savings if we don't provide buses for the private schools? Can we charge them for it? That's, the, that's, a, that's a good question, as it's always been asked every year, and, okay. and we've never really... There's, there's all, there, the reason why we provide busing service for the private schools is because there's an executive order and it hasn't been changed. Okay. So unless this executive order is changed, then we will, um, we can stop providing the services. For free? The executive order is to provide services to the public schools, private schools for free? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Thank you it's, very much, Jeff. It's 86-14. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, nothing extensive, but I, 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 I guess I want to state what I hear is being said, right? And, and, and I have to at least acknowledge that the director is in a very tough position. I mean, the administration has definitely forwarded a budget that gives a cut in, uh, of one point some. And of course, being the director of the administration, you have to go with it. But the other th part that we're hearing, at least that I'm hearing, and I believe we all are hearing, is that at the very least, if you had a status quo budget, same as 2017, that that would definitely be helpful because of all the work that you do. Absolutely. Okay. And again, just to make it very clear, let's just say it, you know, it, is that, yeah, at the very least, a status quo budget would be beneficial to DPW because of all the mandates that you have in front of you. Not only do you have highways, you have the ponding basins, and by the way, 
you guys are the ones who are cleaning out those parking basins, right? Yes, we are. Nice job, because as I drive around, I notice that there's been a lot of work uh, on that, and it's very impressive. And in fact, there's some places I know that I never even knew there was a ponding basin until just now, right? As I see them clear it up, and that's a good thing, though, right? Because it does mitigate the flooding issues, especially with the rainy season coming on. We don't have to be a last-minute reaction to those kind of things. But in essence, what I'm just saying, again, I just want to state it, so if anybody is listening out there, is that you do have a very large mandate. And the reason why I have to say that is because DPW is a in very integral part of the central operations of the government of Guam, right? Whether it be roads, whether it be ponding basins and building inspections and all the good stuff, you're almost like the crew that we need in Gov Guam to go take care of things. Everybody, I mean, I've, if I had a crew at home, gosh, I would do so many things, right? And, uh, you know, when you, when you kind of use that same comparison, you know, to the government, you're a vital part of it. You're, you're the boots on the ground guys who make this government operate. Uh, so, again, I just wanted to state very Thank clearly you, that at the very least, Right, a status quo budget would definitely be very helpful instead of taking a $1.6 million cut. That's, I just want to make that very clear. And I'm hoping my colleagues will hear that as well so that when we do look at the budget, that maybe there are other places within the government who don't play as central a role. They have a role in, our, in, in of course, like everything that we do, but not as central as what DPW does for us. Uh, I do want to... Um, at least ask, and, and maybe it's when I stepped out, I may have missed it, and I, I understand what you're saying when it comes to federal highway funds, uh, and it's an ongoing thing, but with your knowledge of the new administration in Washington, D.C.'s uh, outlook on infrastructure funding, are you optimistic that we might get an increase or at the, you know, in, in any federal highway funding? Um, I, Senator, I think the, the only insight that I may have is that I have um, circulars that come out and I can say that the Department of Transportation, the U.S. Department of Transportation, um, with the FAST Act we have five years so so that's for the federal highway portion. There's other portions. Um, we have Office of Highway Safety and, and, and all those, the, the budgets that we're hearing are actually um, um, the information I have, the same information you have, which is President saying that he wants to increase uh, infrastructure, so um, um, we'll stay hopeful. Yes. Okay. Good enough. But but at this point in time, I'm not seeing any reduction. No reduction. Correct. Okay, and that's a good thing also. That, well, at least you're not getting redu reduced there, right? Um, and, and really, that's all I want to say. We all understand. I mean, I think the the point has been made by our colleagues, and in fact, by the speaker. The, and, and of course you've acknowledged the need for more building inspectors and, and, and whatnot, uh, or for more inspectors. But yeah, I, I get, and you have promised that by this time next year, if not sooner, that you will have that staff uh, to be able to help our community. Because the, the, the chairman is correct, right? The, the longer we delay the approval or the inspection of these businesses and, and buildings, um, then the less we see into our coffers, into our revenue streams. So it, 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 it behooves you to really try to staff yourself to the appropriate level. Uh, but past that, I, I have nothing else to, to add to this conversation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you very much, Director Leonguero, and for the whole entire team and all the staff from Department of Parks and um, I'm sorry, Department of Public Works that are here, the ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for participating in this process. Um, sorry if I missed it in the very beginning, but can you please verify how much from FY17 you received from the budget that the legislature appropriated to you? Are you in receipt of the entire appropriation? At this time, At this we're, time. We're, we have uh, expended about, um, as of May 31, about 60%. We've already expended and encumbered. Okay. In the next um, few weeks toward, till the end of the fiscal year, do you have a allotment schedule that will make you whole at the end of the fiscal year? Yes. 
So you'll receive, you're expected to receive 100% of the monies that was appropriated to you. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for what you what you were saying about road repairs and how you're really working to be more responsive to the community. And I think I share a lot of the concerns raised by my colleagues about you know, the amount of money that you're requesting in this budget and how that's going to impact the responsiveness of the department to meet the needs of our community. Um, I do know that several of my colleagues have introduced bills relating to land in Tizen. And so I just wanted to ask you what the status of adding additional access points into Tizen would be. I'm sorry, the question is? is what's the status of adding additional access points into Tizen? Is that, I know you were talking a little bit about Adrian Sanchez and some of the other projects that are high on your priority list. So I just wanted to see where Tizen was in access, additional access points into Tizen and where that is in your priority list. So the, the biggest project in Tizen for us would be the Tizen Parkway Phase 2. Mm -hmm. That's um, $30 million. And we have um, rights of way issues that we need to, to address. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration won't allow us to do any form of construction until we resolve the, the, highway, uh, the rights of way issues. Um, I think there's six or seven uh, parcels that we need to 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 clean up, and, and and my understanding is that they're going through probate, so it, it's going to be a while for that. That's that's one one um, roadway that we're looking at within uh, Tizen. The other uh, roadway is is 10A, which is um, the um, the airport road, and so. Uh, we're, we're in discussions with them. We're currently doing the design work for that. Um, and th that should be, my guess, uh, if my memory serves me right, is about um, either 14 or 18 million dollars. And then on the other side of Tiedzen, um, where Mar Mariner Road is, um, and this is something again that slipped through the cracks, um, which which allows access into um, places like. Uh, in high school and stuff like that, because that, that, that's very, uh, Senator Ad had mentioned that a while back, it's very vulnerable, and that's why he wanted me to, to look at Mariner Road. Right. Um, so, yeah, Senator Ada had mentioned it, and I know that the mayor of Baragata had also mentioned that as, as an issue um, for many of her constituents and people in the village and other people, um, stakeholders of Tizen High School and, and a number of other um, entities that are housed in that area. So, so I've, I've dropped the ball there as well. Um, I've made initial contact with, um, with um, um, uh, General uh, Leon Guerrero, Rod Leon Guerrero, to see if we can put that project as part of a, um, shoot, uh, I don't know what, <laughs> it's, it's the, the, the equivalent of my highway maintenance crew um, uh, in, in, in their program and see if uh, the National Guard can fund it. And what the, the way that program works is if we get that, that approved, then funding is, is available, uh, and they have people from anywhere in the United States that want to improve their, our equivalent to Red Horse, mm -hmm. um, to come and, and build that roadway. So to me, that was the, the route that I wanted to choose. Uh, and it was certainly close to, to the Army National Guard. He was receptive to that, but I have not followed up on him, um, so I need to, to go back and re-establish contact and figure out how to get this pro that project to proceed. Okay, thank you. Thank you in advance for doing that. Um, with regard to the mayors, during the budget hearing for the Mayor's Council of Guam, they mentioned that the report for Guam Road's pavement inventory is outdated. This report affects their budget. Um, when is the most recent report dated? We, we've, we've actually spent a lot of money, and, and I... Um, that's another thing that I actually think that we can improve on. Um, we spent a lot of money and we hired a, a, a local contractor to, to actually um, measure the, the, the thickness of the road, um, measure and, and account for all the assets, how many signs and signal lights, street lights, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think there's a faster way to do it. And I, uh, I asked, um, I'm asking the question with the Federal Highway Administration if we can do this. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, if we can go through Google Maps or something like that so we can do that measurement. I think what the mayors are, are concerned about are when people
build new subdivisions that add some more roadways for them, and, it, and if, they, if it's deeded to the government of Guam, obviously increases their 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 mileage. And obviously the mayors are interested in the mileage because that's how they divvy up the, the funding that you're giving them. And how often does DPW conduct this report? We the last we did it was uh, I think four or five years ago. But so since I'm asking the question and see if we can take this alternate route to to do an accounting of, 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 of the mileage roadways. I still have to sort that out. Once that gets cleared, then, then we can be doing that on an annual basis or a quarterly basis or whatever. And is that um, that anticipated work reflected in FY 2018 budget? It, it, it doesn't require, I mean, this is something that we can just do once I get approvals and, and once I get everybody to, to agree to that, then we can move forward with it. But it's okay. not on. Um, I wanted to shift to the Department of Education. We all know that DPW is currently providing um, buses for the summer until they put out a bid. How much is the cost to the government for it? So, so last year, I, I, you can ask Frank, but this is what he told me. Uh, normally, the Department of Education sets aside half a million dollars for the summer program. Um, that's for fuel, um, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what we have. Uh, what we spent last year was what three hundred thousand uh, last summer, right? About, about three hundred thousand. So we don't use all of the money, but we whatever amount of money that they set aside, that's it's obviously not budgeted in 2018. We only budget for the regular school year for the summer program. Um, if you, uh, I mean, this is obviously a problem. I think it's because it's too too new, too too it's too much in its embryonic stage. We probably should talk to DOE, GDOE, and see what avenues we have with the U.S. DOE um, that we can take. So we obviously would prefer that they, they, they fund this as opposed to it coming off the shoulders of people of Guam. Okay. And one last question. Um, when I'm out in the community, a lot of teachers, a lot of parents, and other stakeholders, educational stakeholders, um, come to me and they complain about not being able to have field trips for their students. And I know that... Um, you and I have had this discussion before, but I just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of expound on the challenges that DPW faces with regard to this issue and maybe give us an update on how you might be working to improve that. So, so I think the, 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 answers, the answer is that we've already, that, that system is in play. Um, if you want us to, to, to fund that or, and, and not charge the, the students, and I understand, I mean, again, back to Senator Nelson's big question. This is, these really are policy questions. Within my realm, I, my, I make policy decisions with what I have. You're talking about policy, the question of, of, of uh, we're basically coming to you saying, this is what we're asking for to make 2018, school year 2018, 2019 a reality, 2017-2018 a, a reality, because um, we, can, we can take care of the 25, 20, 20, 25 to 30,000 school children during the regular school year. Summer? All bets are off. We don't know how many people in summer. We don't know how many schools. We don't know who needs that program. That that needs to be worked out with uh, GDOE. Um, if you want us to do field trips, again, um, um, it, it's a policy question that, that we, we're only coming to you saying this is bare bones. We're, we're trying to be as frugal as possible. We're trying to do whatever we need to do to, to and we understand. We under, I mean, I clearly understand we need um, more help in the health and education and all this other stuff. And so, trying to do, trying to do our part. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, this is a big, big hit. But if you if you want him to uh, to do field trips, uh, then I don't know. I don't. I don't even know what we would budget for. If I may, what was the what was the question that was asked? How, why is why is the parents paying for the field trips? Yeah, I mean, I think. Well, many teachers well, this is how we, this is how we do it. Our bus drivers are, are um, our bus drivers' times are unique. They work three to four hours in the morning and five to four hours in the afternoon. So anything between the hours of nine thirty and nine o'clock, eight thirty, nine o'clock to eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, that's on their time. So eventually, a field trip happens between the hours of nine o'clock to twelve o'clock. And in order for us to make a driver work that time and complete his whole uh, week, is we have to pay them overtime. So we don't have money for overtime. And let it get clear that we do not, Department of Public Works does not charge the students or the parents. 
we charge the school. So we don't we don't charge the, uh, it's up to the school how they pay for it, but we don't charge the school I, we don't charge the parents or the students to charge the school. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, I think that just in the future, I really look forward to working with you on on that particular issue. And then, um, Mr. Director, I know that we have had conversations about um, just improving the awareness of a lot of our motorists on the road to cyclists. I think that's really important. We've had some deaths in, in the last few years. I think we all really need to be able to figure out how we can share the road better and just be more aware of how people are, are attempting to use more bicycles and, and motorcycles on the road and make sure that everybody gets from point A to point B safely. So thank you to you and your staff for for assisting with that and for all the other work that you continue to do for our community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure I probably just sound redundant as, uh, as the rest of the panel here have already spoken. Um, I, I want to make sure my microphone works. I want to thank you, uh, Director Nogoro, for coming out here with your budget request and your, your deputy and your team here. I'm sure you have the same shortfalls anticipated in the next fiscal year as you've had in the last year. Uh, in this past fiscal year, and uh, I'm sure everyone, uh, and being told to uh, reduce your budget, I'm sure that I can see it in your in your eyes. Uh, I'm sure everyone up here on this panel knows what a good budget feels like, and uh, we're still going to continue to do the hard work, which, and I understand that you will. I guess very much for your loyal and if you and your damned if you don't, and uh, you still got to do what you have to do. So I want to thank you very much, and your team very much for for their loyalty and your hard work too. So thank you very much. Just ask if, your chair. if you could submit in writing before we we dump the budget for FY18. Just ask Mr. Younger if you could submit in writing before FY18. We we dump the budget for the FY18 construction. And I know that most of you deal with emergencies, of course, and for FY18.